Okay, hello everyone. So, in this video, I'm going to talk about the Laplace transforms. I'm going to start with the definition of the Laplace transforms, and then in um, next videos, I'm going to go through the properties of Laplace transform, and then do some examples, and also do the um, inverse of the Laplace transform. So basically, what uh, the Laplace transform is. We know that we always have our equations in the time domain. So, for example, let's say that we have a circuit that it has all its uh, equations in the time domain. So, we're going to have some uh, differential equations. So, what Laplace transform will do, it's basically the transformation of a function f of t from the time domain into the complex frequency domain giving f of s. So, basically, we can say that if we have the Laplace transform it will transform f of t to f of s right and we know that f of t is in the time domain while f of s is in the frequency domain. So how the Laplace transforms can help us, basically, let's say that we apply the Laplace transform to circuit analysis. So we have some differential equations represent the circuit in the time domain, and then we use uh, the Laplace transform and transfer that uh, differential equations into the frequency domain then when we do that, we can use the algebraic equations, um, basically algebraic operations to um, solve those equations. And then we can, again, transfer back to the time domain. So Laplace transform, it is actually shown by this kind of fancy L. So the Laplace transform of the function f of t is equal to f of s. And then it has a definition from 0 to infinity of f of t e to the negative st dt. Okay, so basically it's represented as this 0 with a minus on top. And this means that the instant, very, very small instant before time t equal to 0. Okay, and then basically s is a complex variable that uh, I'm assuming that uh, all of you know that by now, okay? So we said that this is the definition of the Laplace transform, okay? This kind of Laplace transform, which is from zero to infinity, it is named as one-sided Laplace transform, okay? And we also have a two-sided Laplace transform which is the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of f of t e to the negative s t dt is equal to f of s. So wherever you have f of s, this is the Laplace transform of the function f of t, all right? Okay, so let's go through one example. So in this example, let me write here that we have the example here. So in this example, we want to determine the Laplace transform of function u of t. Okay, so we go back to the one-sided uh, Laplace transform. So it is from 0 to infinity. This is Laplace is Laplace of u of t, okay? So here I have u of t e to the negative st dt, all right? So let's see here. What is u of t? We know that u of t is the step function. So we have u 
u of t at t. So how does the <coughs> function u of t looks like? We know that it is 0 until t equal to 0, and then it goes to 1 and stays at 1. So this is how the function u of t looks like. Okay, so let's go back to our integral. What are the limits of my integral? It's from 0 to infinity. What is the value of this function when t is between 0 and infinity? You see that it's always equal to 1, right? So then we can write the Laplace of u of t is equal to integral from 0 to infinity of 1 multiplied by e to the negative st dt. And that will give us minus 1 over s e to the negative st from 0 to infinity. And that will give me minus 1 over s 0 plus 1 over s 1 will be equal to 1 over s. So we see that the Laplace transform of the function u of t, the step function, is equal to 1 over s. And you see that here in this function, if I either uh, chose to use the double-sided Laplace transform, I would get the same result. Why? Because we know that from negative infinity to 0, we do not have any value for u of t. Basically, the value is equal to 0. So u of t in this interval of time is equal to 0. Right? So then the integral will be equal to 0. So the next function, let's do another example about the Laplace transform. So this is example 2. So in this example, our function f of t is equal to e to the negative at u of t when a is greater than or equal to 0. So we want to find the Laplace transform of function f of t. So let's go through the definition. Laplace of e to the negative a t u of t will be equal to from 0 to infinity of e to the negative a t e to the negative s t dt. So what would be this equal to? Why did I just write e to the negative at and I didn't write e to the negative at multiplied by u of t because I know that this is my original function, right? And I know that the same as we did before, u of t will be 1 when we are in the interval between 0 and infinity. That's why I did not include it here. Here, okay? So we know that this is equal to integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative a plus s multiplied by t dt. And that will be equal to minus 1 over s plus a e to the negative s plus a t from 0 to infinity. And that will give me 1 over s plus a. Okay, so that would be the Laplace transform of an exponential function multiplied by the step function. All right. So this was the this was how we use the definition of the Laplace transform in order to find the Laplace transform of the function. In the next video, I'm going to go through uh, some properties of the Laplace transforms and basically uh, show you how you can use the Laplace table in order to uh, solve your questions. So please, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave it in the comment box down below. Thanks. Bye.